Welcome to the Organizational Transformation Kung Fu Podcast with your hosts, Sandy Varecchia and Jennifer Long. Welcome to this podcast, Organizational Transformation Kung Fu. This is our first live and in person in the same business center uh, together in, from our, within, within our 39, 40 podcasts that we've done in the past. That's so great. I'm really super pleased to be here. We've had a wonderful couple of days in New York City to prepare for this podcast. So I'm Sandy Brecchia, and I'm here from Satori Consulting in Toronto, and I'm here with my friend... Jen Long from Own Up in Denver, Colorado, and we're both here in New York City. Yes, so we do know each other. It's not just this gag we have about getting online together. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we have, like I said, spent a couple of really good days of really good food, really good restaurants, really good discussions about leadership. Yes. And we're excited here today to talk about um, leadership. Leadership at the top. Leadership right? at the top. So, and the importance. Yeah. Um, one of the issues that we're dealing with, because executives, obviously coaching the executives at the top of the team, but also we find ourselves doing a lot of development for their staffs, right? Their director levels and their management levels within the organization. And a lot of times the investment money goes into high potential programs, goes into let's develop future leaders, let's develop the leadership that's up and coming in the organization. And what we find is that the investment isn't getting made in the top team itself necessarily. Mm -hmm. And that that is a challenge for a lot of reasons, but that it's something that um, companies really should be looking at initially because the landscape of business, pandemic, all of it is changed. And what is the top team doing to invest in their own learning and their own shift? to be able to lead effectively within the context of what's happening today and actually being able to demonstrate to the up and coming leaders what leadership should be looking like, right? Mm -hmm. That walk in the talk. So let's talk a little bit about sort of how we got here, right? So functionally, leaders are are, are moved up, right? And so we assume once you hit a certain plateau, you have all the skills and the capabilities and the competencies to be a strong leader, which may be true, but we have to also look at it in the confines of, of, of leadership team. Right. And does it, is the team holistic in the competencies in which it brings forward? And that's sort of where it falls down. So we, we bring these teams together. We assume that they have the, uh, the competencies. We assume they you know, share one leadership brain. Um, and, uh, and then all the money then, so we need to develop our people. We need to develop our people and really lose sight of, of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... Um... The discussion is always an interesting one because they can see where the organization has gaps and they can see, you know, relative to their own execution and performance and uh, what what needs to happen. But the the reflection internally isn't necessarily there. Right. It's it's the whole Marshall Goldsmith. What got you here won't get you there. Yeah. Understanding. And it, it just really becomes the impact of a leader who isn't learning. Um, can be huge, Mm -hmm. right? So what are some of the things we're finding relative to when leaders aren't open to their own, they're not self-aware enough to know what what they're looking to, what they need to be doing? Well, I think one of the first and foremost thing is that they, they, there's lack of clarity on the direction of the strategic plan or strategy, right? So when they're not having those conversations, it's, like, how do we know if we're moving forward, if we're moving the organization forward, if we're not stopping to have those conversations? You know, that's the, the most important thing that the leadership team is going to be doing. Um, and, you know, we're doing a lot of strategy work, which the execution of it is, is often very poor. I think having those conversations at the top level about the why, mm-hmm. and is it is it just that we can't execute on it? Um, it isn't just that we can't execute, but why? What, what are the gaps in terms of in our team and in order to ensure that that gets that gets done. Right. Num- number one thing, right, that leadership teams really kind of struggle with is this emotional intelligence, this psychological safety. So when we talk about leadership learning, leadership development is self-development. Mm-hmm. It's better understanding about who you are, what you're strong in, what you're not strong in really understanding what your insecurities are, not just you as a person, but you as a leader. Where do you feel like, where are you trying to hide? Oh God, I don't, I'm not clear on, or I'm not, I don't understand, right? I can't get to good 
hard conversations around strategy, around decisions, mm -hmm. around especially tough decisions as your business is growing or, or shrinking, um, how to have the, how to table the really mm -hmm. important issues, right? It's, 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 that gets stymied because I'm more worried about not showing up insecure. I've made it to this level. Yeah. I should be competent. I should be, and to be vulnerable at the top is probably one of the hardest asks that, that I don't think leaders really face head on. And I think that whole adage of fake it till you make it, it yeah. only takes you so far. Right. And so if you are still faking it and you're at sitting at an executive table, you sort of need to then sit back and do that introspection and, and think about your leadership style. And I also think the other, and I'm curious on your perspective on this, is like, is it the, the top leader's job to make sure that these conversations are having? or are being had, or is it, is it everybody's sort of incumbent upon everybody to say, ho, 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 we need to stop. We need to, we need to think we're not doing well. Is it because mm -hmm. we don't have the skills? Yeah. Is having, it us? Yeah. The first question we should be, we're not doing well. Is it us? Yeah. And what are we doing or not doing that's creating this for the organization? Because it's so easy to look at middle managers and say, you know, they're the frozen middle yeah. or they're the whatever. Point fingers everywhere else. Yeah. And, and, uh, or it's, it's all the other circumstances when really the first question should be a self self examination. And I think it's both. And mm -hmm. I think it's the top, right. President of the organization, whoever the, the top person is, it's their responsibility, mm -hmm. but it's also, if you're going to run like a team and, and this, you know, I always say when I'm doing leadership development, I was like, you know, leadership, heroic leadership, business is too complex, right? It's really a team effort. Yeah. And there's not always just one person who's, who's going to make a business go. It's really a, a group of people mm -hmm. that are going to make it happen. And while it's, it should be team driven and team led, the president or the leader does have the obligation to set the tone. They do. They do. Yeah. But I think, I don't think we need to wait for that person to, to give the A-OK -okay to have a vulnerable conversation. Right. It, right. You know, if they're if they're not emotionally equipped for this, somebody on the team needs to sort of kind of prod at it and, and make it happen and right. have those maybe uncomfortable conversations because it might be that person at the top that doesn't have the competencies to lead really well. So like, how do you have those conversations? Right. 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 So you're having the one on ones with the, the folks who are in a different location, who are, you know, on the team. And they will say, well, you know, we, that would be great if the leader would do that, but they're really not wired that way. Mm -hmm. And so, so are, it stops. right. So is that acceptable? Do you look down at your middle managers and you're, you've got somebody in a role and they're not performing some aspect of the role. And do you just say, well, they're not wired that way. So we're just going to let that ride. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> it doesn't happen, right? So we, and you take action on that. And so we're, we're sort of asking, starting here with this podcast about talking about leaders taking actions for themselves in order to model um, the way for the rest of the organization. Because we know that if you walk the talk, if you really lean into the competencies that are important, others will see that and others will do it, you know, build it and they will follow. And, and that's really what we expect our leadership teams to do. Yeah, because if if the the impact to the organization is if the the team isn't going to have the hard conversations, and what is how does that impact the information they get, mm -hmm. right? That's brought to them. How how willing and open are the people below going to be? And and if they're not tight up at the top, the distance between the everyone else and how they have to negotiate their way through getting things done just becomes much, much more difficult. That's right. Any additional thoughts there? No, I just, I think that, it, you know, if, if, if you create the space for those conversations to be had, other team leaders within the organizations will do the same. And uh, if you create that space, there's that willingness for people to say, I, I can't do it. I don't have the tools. I don't have the funds. I don't have the whatever, or my team isn't set up for success. I need more of and ask for what they need. And I think that's a lot of what we're asking of, of leaders is, is to create that space to do it within their own space, but to create the space and model the way for others below them for um, strong, cohesive leadership throughout an organization. Right. Right. And that whole, um, being able to get a coordinated effort, right? If you're not alignment, 
Mm-hmm. Alignment is the ongoing conversation around heading in the same direction. And when there is a lack of vulnerability, a lack of aware, everybody just tends to operate where they're comfortable. And siloed. Much and the more. silo is where I'm comfortable. And mm-hmm. the silo is, and, and I can I can rationalize that because that's what I'm responsible to deliver against. And I don't have to, to speak outside that. And when that becomes my mindset, our ability to align as a team is fractured Mm -hmm. because I'm there protecting what I know instead of being open about what I don't know, what I should know, and sharing my perspective of what I see in other areas of the business. Because once we're in a, in a silo, we stop seeing the things we should all sometimes we should notice yeah because it becomes very apparent yeah and we want the the lower leadership roles to be cross functional in in how they're dealing with other areas and when as a leader when you're staying in your lane only in your lane it's difficult for them for others to see the value of you know cross functionally working with other uh, departments and that's really critically important um, so i think we say in strategy work, alignment is the silver bullet, right? You can have a, a, a great strategy, but if you don't have alignment, it, it's just not going to go anywhere. But if you have a poor strategy and alignment, you're going to move the needle somewhere. So think about alignment from um, a leadership perspective um, and think about it from and how much it's going to positively impact your strategy. That is, uh, that yeah. is a silver bullet. Well, and I think people under, underestimate alignment and thinking of it as it's just a communications kind of piece of a strategy, right? How are we going to, how are we going to communicate this? How are we going to cascade this down? Mm -hmm. And that's just step one, right? That's just like the cascading is the awareness level, the getting people their heads around what, what the objectives are, what the strategy is about. But alignment is the ongoing conversations and decisions that hold the line Mm -hmm. around what the target is. And that's really easy to lose the plot over time. And especially if you're, remote and you're not working uh, together proximity wise, right? That, to, that it becomes that much more of a challenge because you're, you're not connected to have the conversations. Right. Yeah. All right. So figuring out like and measuring it. So we talked a little bit of, uh, about if we're going to do leadership at the top, how do we know, like what, what do we, how do we find those gaps? What are those gaps? Yeah. Right? How are we identifying those? And then how are we really knowing if leaders are actually learning? Mm-hmm. So what thoughts on that? Um, I think you need to find sort of those leadership competencies that are most important to your team because yes. there's lots of different competencies, right? But I think to have a like 360 degree view of your team in terms of what those competencies are and what people bring is going to be really important. I think in the, the VUCA world that we're living in now, like, you know, adaptability has got to be one of them. And how adaptable are the people on your team to the changes that are happening around you? Yes. I think it's one, a very important one. Yes. Um, I think second to that, I think is probably communication. Yes. Right. The, you know, it's a big bucket, right? That's everything big, everything leads to communication. That's a very big bucket, yes. But, you know, if you, like I said to my future leaders last week, if you think you're communicating enough, communicate more because, you, you know, you need to over communicate for people to hear. For people to understand, yeah. for people to, to, to and it's, buy it's in. not just communicating what you're thinking, mm-hmm. it's communicating what you're sensing, what you're feeling, right? Yeah. What you're worried about, what, what keeps you up, like all of the things, yeah. right? It's just the degree of communication of just the objectives is this tiny, um, piece of it and the aperture needs to be much, much bigger about not only what do I see, what do I feel about what I see, what am I sensing, what, what, and because that's where you start to surface potential issues, potential misalignment, potential challenges that you didn't expect and how you adapt as you go. And Mm -hmm. the communication is where you find the adaptive uh, design. Mm -hmm. And so one way, I guess, of, of finding what those, com- it, well, you know, we know what the competencies are, of, of understanding how people view you in that competency zone mm-hmm. is to do a 360 of some sort, where you're, you have an, you know, your peers have a way of observationally telling you what they see in you. 
Well, and not just, and here's the thing about 360s, and let's just talk about how uh, assessments and algorithms and all that stuff has gotten really, really, really good. Thank you, AI. Yeah. <laughs> like just the whole science around that, but the individual 360 is a great thing. But in the last few years, um, they're coming out with team 360s. Mm-hmm. And team 360s are very cool. It's really about how are we assessing a team's performance through the eyes of the team's stakeholders. And so the, the leadership team is being assessed by the customer, by the supplier, by the employee, mm-hmm. by, you know, so you, there's a there's a, a better sense of feedback that they can all own together. And so if you haven't really explored the opportunity to, of doing a Team 360, I think it's a, a huge tool to start because when you do that, you really start having to think about yourselves as a team yeah. instead of an individual player on the team. Mm-hmm. And that kind of helps solidify and close some of those gaps because how you think about it is how you show up in it. Yeah. And if you're thinking about, um, I'm just, you know, I'm just finance, right? That's right. I don't need to have a personality because I'm just finance. I'm just finance. I'm just, I'm just I'm running the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, I'm joking aside for all finance people out there. Yeah, we love this. We love yeah. finance people. Yeah. But I do, you know, that is true. And also the, the team 360 also takes away the, the feeling of, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing something wrong or I'm not good in this area versus the team needs to be, you know, shoulder depth and, and, and stronger. So I, it's a great way of, of allowing those vulnerable conversations to happen around team and sort of take that individual aspect out of it. Right? Yes. So if you're having, if, if as a team, you can't, you can't have those conversations, this is a much better way of, of having the conversation. And it's not a just, you know, it, Unless you're going to do individual 360s for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or just, which is hard, right? Because then everybody's rating everybody else. And a and time it's commitment, a, and it's a little bit of a circus. Okay, um, yeah. So um, measuring and and what are you really looking for? Not just from the team, but just as as what are how do you know the leadership chain change is happening? The learning. Yeah is happening and what are some of what might be some of those leading indicators and one of the interesting things of a leading indicator that i don't think people think about is language mm. how things are being talked about the words that get introduced um is it a we thing and not a me thing and and do we speak of our other parts of the business like they're distant or that that do i have ownership language when i speak about it and those are really interesting indicators because of the conversation, the nature of how we talk about it is mm-hmm. actually, so what might be some of those words that based on who your team is or where you're trying to go, what would you be looking for? What are the, the stories you'd be looking to tell and in what context are you telling them? Mm-hmm. And that's a leading indicator if we've all stopped saying you guys yeah. or us, if the us and them thing goes away yeah. and it's a we thing all the it's time. that department, not us. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But do you think then that leadership teams, so they do a 360, they do their competencies, they're having these conversations, they need to determine what these com- those stories should be mm-hmm. before, right? So what are they looking, what are you looking for? Yeah. And so taking some time and, and you know, time is is not something we have a lot of, of, but if you don't take the time as leaders to spend the, you know, the the time to do this sort of, this stuff, it makes it, it's, I don't know, you need to take the time, right? It is as important as strategy. It's as important as budgets. It's as important as, you know, the, the next big thing that you're going to be doing because yeah. this is permeating through your organization. And once you get everybody rowing in that same direction, uh, then you know things will go faster and things will move faster and things will be easier and well and you're already having the conversations let's just let's be really clear you're already spending the time you're just not talking to each other you're only talking to people that you're connected to right mm-hmm. you're having conversations about your frustrations you're having conversations it's happening but is it happening with everyone right is it happening in the right context or are you only having those conversations on the side before the meeting or after the meeting or whatever when the team is together mm-hmm. those are big indicators too that um success is happening when those side conversations are no longer side Stop, conversations yeah. that the conversations the things you need to say you say to the whole the 
whole team, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, just say to the people that you on the team that you're closest to. Yeah. Yeah. And, a, you know, one of the strongest team norms is that there are no sidebar conversations. I right. Think. No sidebar so conversations. If you, if, you, if you have that as a team norm, as a leadership team, if you don't have norms, you should probably think about what those norms are in order to allow for those things to happen and for people in the moment to say, hey, Jen, I saw that you were talking about this after the meeting or you just came to me to talk to me. Let's talk about this as a group. As a yes. Whole. And it's that easy. I know that, you know, it's like you hear it and you go, yeah, of course. Yeah. But it happens. But it happens. You stop somebody in the hall and you're like, God, what was your thought about so-and-so? And then you kind of vent out this, this thinking. Mm-hmm. And for the other person to recognize, you know, why didn't you say that in the moment? Mm-hmm. And bring it. Bring it next time we're we're together. Yeah. Because it's kind of just it puts a it puts a pause on the willingness to do that, right? And everybody starts to go, okay. And and that team accountability, that's how it works, right? Somebody we have to say it to each other, like we all agreed we weren't gonna do that. Yeah. 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 So I think leadership starts at the top, as we know, which we you know, a mantra we've always saying. Um, but what we're finding more and more these days is that leaders are forgetting about themselves as leaders and the competencies and the development that they need. And they're sort of push, pushing the development dollars downward, which is great. And we want you not keep to, doing that. Don't stop doing that. <laughs> but take some time as, as a team and, and think about the impact that you have on the organization and what people are looking for from you as a, as a team. Right, because what will happen is the investment dollars you make in the middle will have limited yeah. impact, if any impact, if you're not also invested at the top, because this top will inadvertently not recognize when change comes from the middle mm-hmm. and can thwart it because they aren't yeah. bought in or in step with what the long range design and effort is really about. Right. And when you're asking your leaders to change and to do these different leadership qualities that you're asking them to, to learn and, and project, if, if it's sort of not in tune with you as a leadership team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think that willingness, the interpersonal risk you have to take at the top, mm-hmm. right? You've gotten there, you're feeling secure, or maybe you're not, you're, you're silently terrified. <laughs> Imposters, <laughs> whatever's <laughs> happening. The sooner you get your arms around that and hold on to that and go, okay, I've got to, I've got to work on myself mm-hmm. first. And what do I know that, that I'm doing that creates a lack of team that, that, holds me in a secure place as opposed to creating the level of discomfort that says I'm learning, that says I am willing to take both a performance risk and an interpersonal risk to do something differently, to fundamentally shift how I'm willing to engage with not only my directs, but my peers. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you're moving forward from a learning perspective is there is a level of vulnerability there. Absolutely. And it's not the imposter kind. It's the full on, oh, crap. How does, ooh, this makes me uncomfortable. But I need to say it and I need to learn from it, right? Yeah. You know, we always talk about, you know, fail, fail fast and learn from your mistakes. And, and so that's, it, it's no different from leaders, right? We yeah. practice what you preach to your, to your people underneath. So, and they can see it mm-hmm. and they can see it and they can tell if you are putting it in there or not putting it in there because leaders are in a way having to, they have to learn out loud because they are visible. And if you think you're fooling them that they, you know, you're masquerading as, yes, I'm the learning leader, they'll, they'll know. They know. They know. And then they won't take their leadership training or any sort of training seriously. Right. Because you are sending the message. It's not important. That's right. That's right. So we're going to stop there because we don't want anybody to send a message that it's not important. (laughs) I think we sort of, uh, sort of ranted on about this enough. Uh, Um, we want everybody to sort of step away and, and think about themselves and team at the, at the higher level because it begins there. So this is uh, Sandy and Jen talking to you from New York. Where there's a lot of trash hunting and party and ice collecting oh, happening. Gosh. So thanks for walking, sticking with us through that. <laughs> All right. Good luck with it. And we hope to see you again on OT Kung Fu. Yep. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. You can check out Sandy's website at satoriconsultinginc.ca. 
That's S-A-T-O-R-I consulting I-N-C dot C-A. And visit Jen's website at own-up.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.